Good morning, First Church and all of our online worshipers. Welcome to the First Church of God Christian Life Center Virtual Sanctuary. Please feel free to smash that share button and share this post. Also, start a watch party and don't forget to sing along, dance with a shout if you have to, and clap your hands. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. At this time, we will be doing our call to worship. Please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer. And it reads, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, you are so gracious and kind to us to bring us forth to this moment. Father, we pray that you would come into this sanctuary. Lord God, our homes, our living rooms, our bathrooms, our jobs, wherever we are viewing this, Lord God, we pray that you would come in and shift the atmosphere. Father, we know that you are the creator of all atmospheres, God, and you dwell and inhabit the praises of your people. So, Father, as we worship you, as we lift our voices, as we shout unto your name, as we pray unto you, God, we pray that you would come in and dwell with us. We pray that you would sit here with us, Lord God, and be in the midst as we glorify you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Cover this service. Cover the man of God who will bring forth the word. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this point, at this point in time, we're going to ask our praise team. We ask that you receive our First Church of God praise team. But be during praise and worship, we ask everyone um, to uh, type your prayer request. To send us your prayer request during praise and worship. And after praise and worship, we will have congregational prayer. Thank you. Good morning, First Church of God Christian Life Center. Hey, good morning to all of you in the virtual world. You know what time it is. It's time for you to get up out your seat. It's time for you to be able to praise and worship God with us on this morning. We know that you are not physically in the building, but we are in the building together. We are in Christ's building. So we thank you, God. We want to tell you that we are blessed when we come. We are blessed when we go. We are blessed coming. We are blessed when we're going. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed in our homes. We're blessed in our families. Come on and praise God with us on this morning. Let's go. Come on, you know this song. It's a real simple song. We want you to type right now and just say blessed. If you know that you are blessed because you've made it through another week, we want you to speak that into existence right now. Come on, praise team. Let's go. Here we go. Everybody say bless, 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 bless. Everybody sing bless, 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 yeah, yeah. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go.
At this moment, I want to bring up Minister Mernon Walker for congregational prayer. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is the Lord good? And his mercy endureth forever. The Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. The Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Father God, we thank and praise you because of who you are. We thank and praise you, God, that you woke us up this morning with our mind on you. God, we thank and praise you that there have been places that are open up where we can come and worship you. So, God, we ask that the spirit of the Holy Ghost would go into every household, every phone, every car that is listening to this service. God, we ask that your healing power would go across this land as never before because, God, you are our healer. You have everything that we need, God, and it is in you that we put our trust. So, God, today is a new day in you. God, I ask for those that are sick and shut in, oh God, which is just about everybody in this world, that they would be able to look to the hills from which cometh their help. For you, oh God, are our help. You, oh God, are our provider. You, oh God, are the answer to all of our prayers. And today, oh God, we beseech you in the name of Jesus to do what it is that you do so best. You have taken us to this point, oh God, and we know that you will bring us to an expected end, and that is in victory. So God, have your way in this service. I ask that you anoint the man of God afresh and anew. That every word that comes out of his mouth, it will be a testimony to everyone to know just who you are. God, draw as never before. Heal as never before. Work out as never before. I ask, oh God, for the hands that don't have God. Fill them with what it is that they need. For it's in Jesus that we put our trust. You, oh God, are everything. And in you, we put our faith. So God, have your God-like way today. Have your God-like way today. Today is a new day. And we know as they say, it's going to work. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. For it's going to work in your favor. You will get the glory. You will get the honor. And you will get the praise. For it's in Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name. That we all together say, Amen. Amen. greatest pastor on this side of heaven, Pastor Monte L.G. Dillard Sr. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, I want you right where you are, First Church of God Christian Life Center, to lift up your voice and give God a shout of praise right in your living room, right in your bedroom, right in your kitchen. Come on and magnify the God of our salvation. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, let me see some hand claps in the comments. Come on, let me see your hand claps in the comments. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify. Come on, don't let me do it by myself. I want to see those hand claps in the comments. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together it is so good to be in the house of God and by house of God I mean in our virtual sanctuary this morning worshiping with each and every one of you I want you to receive this uh, huge virtual hug from your pastor I want you to know that it is my prayer and my desire that all is well with you and your family I realize that we are in strange times and this thing is seeming to be shifting by the moment. But one thing I'm glad about is a God who never changes. The Bible declares that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's why we have no reason to fear First Church. Because we know that the same God who brought us through that is the same God who will bring us through this. 
I'm so thankful for this wonderful praise team music ministry. I want to clap my hands and thank God for them, our musicians. So thankful for everyone who is contributing and playing their part to make our service. And that includes all of you in church this morning watching us live. I want you to know that I believe that not many days hence God will bring us all back together one more time. And let me tell you something. If you ain't going to shout, I'll dance for you. Because I intend to dance enough for all of us when we all get back into the house of God. Let the church say amen to that. So thankful for Minister Kendrick leading us this morning. Thankful for Minister Myrna Walker eloquently and effectively praying for us. And I want to just say hello to all of you. I am excited to share the word of God. I am just so thankful for this worship this morning. And I pray that you feel the presence of God where you are. We know that we serve a God who is not bound geographically. As a matter of fact, the Old Testament king, when wanting to build the Lord a house, said, what can I build that can really contain you? That is why he has put his spirit in us and he has made us, he has made us his house, the tabernacle of the living God. And so, though we desire to be here, I want you to know that right where you are, the temple of the Lord is there because you are there. And so we thank God for that. I want to welcome all of our visitors. First Church, let's welcome all of our visitors into our virtual sanctuary. Whether you've worshipped with us before or not, we're so glad to have you. And we hope that you hang out the whole service and, uh, and you join us as often as you so desire. We're certainly thankful for that. As I am praying for all of you, we continue to pray for our families and our children. Our seniors had an opportunity to do a senior Bible study with our legacy members, the 62 and over here at First Church on Friday. And man, it was a Holy Ghost party. Let me tell you something. Our mothers and fathers of Zion was turned, baby, and we had a blast. And we will be back on this Friday at noon every week uh, having our, our legacy member Bible study. Look forward to doing that uh, one more time and thankful for, for that wonderful opportunity. But we also want to keep uh, specific people in prayer as all of us are on the prayer list for now. And I uh, just want you to remember Sister uh, Vanola Milam. I uh, spoke with her last night had a, another procedure this week and is in the hospital and uh, we're believing God for strength for her let the church say amen to that we also uh, talked to mother Myrtle Bernard this week and uh, she is in rehab facility can't have visitors but so good to hear her on the phone and several others I've spoke with and that we have issues that are non COVID-19 related and so we are continuing to keep them in our prayers. We want to keep the Roseman family in prayer as they've had a few family members make their transition from earth to reward these past couple of weeks. And I am sure that there are some things maybe you're going through I don't know about. Please make sure you let us know here at our church and in our office so that we're praying for you and seeing about you. And uh, we always want to keep those things lifted up in prayer. Listen. Really quickly, I want to get through this and bring the praise team back, and I'll be preaching in a few moments. Next Sunday is first Sunday, and we are going to have communion. Let the church say amen to that. Now, here, here's what we're going to do. Our office is on an amended schedule right now, and I'm monitoring that day to day. Um, right now, it is 9 to 12, Tuesday through Friday, 8 to 12 today on Sunday. Um, so it's a, it's a shorter, much shorter schedule. Uh, there are some few things we, we like to be on site to try and make sure are done. Um, and if you happen to be going to an essential place, not just out, and you want to stop by, we're going to make some available in the church office for you to stop by and get. We're going to do this in a very responsible way to ensure that uh, there are no problems. But the second option is that you have your own prepared. Say man to that. Now, I want you to know, like all things, this uh, body of our Lord Jesus and his blood uh, is a combination of what we do tangibly, but more so what's happening in our heart. So if you happen to go to the grocery store this week and want to get you some grape juice and get you a nice roll, and I'm not being facetious, but we literally are going to do this, then please feel free to do that if you prefer not to come out of church or just can't get by here. But I want to stand here next week. And virtually 
give you the Lord's Holy Communion. And let me just be honest, there are some preferences of what you should have, grape juice and bread. But I'm going to be honest. If you don't get out to the store and get none this week, I want you to have something. Something that you set aside and consecrate in your mind and your heart next week as communion. And until we can get back here and I can hand it to you myself, I want to do that. And I think that God would not have a problem with that. And so we clap our hands and we thank God for that. We will be serving the Lord's communion next week. So I'm really looking forward to that. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, First Church of God CLC. All of our services after they are done live are placed there. You can go back and watch them. They also remain available on our church's Facebook live page. And you guys know I can't hug you at the back door. So tonight at 6 o'clock again, First Lady and I will be on Facebook Live. We call this at the back door, the virtual style, where it's a lighthearted check-in where we can see how you guys are doing. So if you're not doing nothing tonight at 6, we'll be on. That can be found at Pastor M. Dillard uh, on uh, my Facebook Live page, Pastor Monte L.G. Dillard. Uh, catch me on Facebook doing that tonight. And so we are certainly thanking God and looking forward um, to him doing that. About to bring the praise team up, and I'll do some more of, uh, of this at the end of service. But before I go, I want to say hi. Let's see who we got. Uh, we got online. We got Sister Brenda Davis. Sister Kay is on there. See Sister Natasha. Brother Aaron Gaines. Sister LaShawn. Sister Paula, what's up? We are certainly thankful Sister Karen Jones is online. We got Sister Joni Carter. We got the Smarts, and uh, we got Sister Michelle, Shelly Shell. Hey, I hope to give some more shout-outs here before the end of service, so make sure you stick with us. But I want to just say hi to a few of you. Thank you so much for being in our service. Our praise team is going to give us one more selection, and then in a few minutes, I'll be back with the word of the Lord. Stick right there. Let's continue to have a great worship service. God bless you.
Somebody ought to call on his name right now. I said somebody ought to call on the name of Jesus right now. Come on, would you lift your hands wherever you are? Would you call on the name of Jesus wherever you are? Would you be reminded that the name of the Lord is a strong tower? That the righteous run in. And they are safe. Come on, First Church. Shout unto the God of your salvation. I don't care where you are or what you're doing or who's around. Call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Make a sanctuary where you are. Make an altar right where you are. I'll turn my living room into the house of God. He's been so good. He's been so good. In spite of all that the world is facing. I know I can call on Jesus. I know I can call on Jesus. Ah! Hallelujah. Yeah. So, Father, we have seen time and time again the results of calling on your name. We have experienced time after time after time what happens when we call on the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we will continue. We will not be silenced. As a matter of fact, we declare like David, and I'll become even more undignified than this. As I look at all that God has done, as you've kept us in the midst of the uncertainty of this old world, we know one thing that is stable and that is Jesus what is Jesus doing right now sitting at the right hand of the father making intercession on our behalf and here's one thing we know Lord that as long as you are praying for us <laughs> all is well as long as we are on your watch, all is well. We sure hope you were pleased with our worship today. That's our sacrifice. Pray that it was a, a fragrance pleasing in your nostrils. And now as you've allowed us praise, we ask that you would give us preaching. As you have given us music, we ask that you would give us a message. As you've met us in songs, we ask that you would meet us in the scriptures. I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, that they would be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the church say amen. Wow! I feel the presence of God in this place. And I am so thankful to walk into an atmosphere that is conducive for preaching. Would you meet me in one book back from last week's text? Last week I preached from Psalm 127. This week I remain in the Song of Ascents, books 120 through 134. And I want to preach from Psalm 126 today. I have been spending time in the songs of degrees so some of your bibles call them these pilgrimage psalms these post-exilic hymn songs that would be sang as the people of god were able to return to the house of god and i spoke to you last week psalm 127 you can see that message on first church of god clc's youtube page that entire service uh, last week on I am going to bed except the Lord built the house whoever built it labors in vain I want to 
speak uh, this week again from one book back Psalm 126 um, labeled in my Bible the Thanksgiving a Thanksgiving for restoration a song of degrees and I would like to read the entire Psalm 126 verses 1 through 6 and offer to you some insights of encouragement and hope and then uh, we'll have uh, our altar call and have our offering and have a little bonus praise and worship. Amen. Psalm 126, King James Version of the Word of God say this. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. If you're at home, I would love if you would stand for the reading of God's Word, even at your home. Amen. Come on. You're in your sanctuary, even at home, staying with us. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, verse 1, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue filled with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us. Yeah, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And the word of the Lord is blessed. You may all have your seats. This morning, I want to share with you from the thought, the God of either way. The God of either way the God of either way as I mentioned just a couple minutes ago my brothers and my sisters we find ourselves here parked of sorts I I I almost have a sanctified park my car is in park here having spent much time these last couple of weeks meditating on uh, these psalm of ascents, these pilgrimage psalms, they, they are called of sort. These, these uh, specific songs that are believed to have been assigned to Israel as this is what you sing when you go to church. It would be similar to us singing the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. It would be similar to us singing that song or my grandmama's song near the cross during communion. Certain things required certain hymnology of sort. And I've I've found great solace and comfort both in the time, my brothers and sisters, that we all are in, this time of Selah. I spoke about two weeks ago from Psalm 46, This Salah, this pause, this sanctified chill out that we all seem to be on. I've meditated from that perspective, but also have been finding great joy and great admonishment from Psalm 120 to 134. You should join me in studying that the next few weeks. I found great joy in reading of the recorded testimony of how it felt For the people of Israel, when they had been prohibited from worshiping in their house of God in Jerusalem due to their captivity. And maybe these two scenarios or situations, one which we find ourselves in and one that they found themselves in, are not explicitly a facsimile of each other. But there are some tremendous, tremendous encouragements there. I'm practicing for when all is clear and we are able 
to come back into the house of God physically together where we might even shout the words of four psalms before my text today, 122, where he says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but that ought to have and bring new meaning for all of us during this time. It ought to bring encouragement to each and every one of us that the same God who lifted the captivity of his people who were then allowed to go back to their preferred method and their pronounced way of doing things. I, I see in the text that if he be the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore, then what he did for them, y'all ain't shouting, he'll do for us. I looked at this and, and in my introduction last week, I spent much time uh, explaining to you the breakdown uh, of, of these uh, psalms and explaining to you that of the 150, we believe David is accredited with just maybe about half that we know of. These song of ascents, Psalm 120 to Psalm 134, we only have some certainty about a couple of the altars. For example, last week, Psalm 127, we believe strongly that Solomon wrote that one. Psalm 126's author is not as defined as Psalm 127, which leads us to be able to argue that this was possibly, again, written by Ezra or maybe Nehemiah in the post-exilic existence of Israel. I hope I'm not boring you. I'm setting you up right. It is also, though, argued that it possibly, Psalm 126, could have been written by David. Though it is not likely, maybe after David had been on the run from his son Absalom and had not been able to reside in Jerusalem and spent a time running for his life, that maybe once David, 2 Samuel between chapters 15 and 19, finds himself excited to be able to come back to the house of God. Either way, whether it was David or Ezra, the truth remains that God is able to restore things. Watch this. I don't believe even merely back to the way that they were, but I believe that God is able to restore and even increase things in a way that it didn't appear was happening when you were in the middle of it, but somehow, some way, he has done something to enlarge your territory, even in the midst of great turmoil. You, you don't see it now. Maybe you struggle with that given our current circumstances and limits, but this is your pastor preaching, and I want you to know that God is in the midst of this thing, and that he has not forsaken us or left us without hope and just as I am encouraged by how God restored his people in Psalm 126 I believe one day somebody will read the annals of our lives and be encouraged that just like God did it for Israel and just like God did it for Dylan, God is going to do it for me. I wish I had you in here. I would tell you to just shout Lord I believe you're restoring me right now and so I want you to know I want you to be ever confident that God is going to do it and when he does this restorative work it's going to be amazing but what but what do I do now what do we do now what do we do in this moment in this moment I want you to find encouragement from my brothers and sisters. Look at verse 1, Psalm 126. I love this verse because it speaks to the magnificent glory of our God. They write and say, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. My God. They said, when God fixed it and restored it and we were able to return it was like a dream. Has God ever done something for you, my brothers and my sisters, that was so good, that was so marvelous, that was so even fast that it didn't even feel real? How 
know. Aren't you glad to know that God can do things, my God? Some things that will blow your mind. He can turn things. He can straighten things out. I wish I had some witnesses who have seen God move into a dire set of circumstances. And you've seen God turn that thing faster than you could complain before you even do it. I want you to know that God will do it so good. Baby, you'll be thinking you dreaming, but lay hands on yourself and say, self, this is not a dream. God really does this for real. If you're watching at home, I want you to type on that. This thing is real. This thing is real. It's real. But see, God is so good that he will do it in a way they say in verse 1 when he did it it felt like a dream can I ask you a question do you believe that God can do something so great that it will be like a dream come true <laughs> y'all ain't praying for me this morning we were like those who dream. Look at verse 2. Then our mouth was filled with laughter. When the Lord brought them out of captivity and returned them to the land of their nativity. And they went in the house of God and experienced his divinity. They said it felt like a dream. And all we could do was smile and laugh because we saw where we were. And now we see where God has us. And all we could do is smile. Our mouths were filled with laughter. Our tongues were filled with singing. If I had time, I would pause here parenthetically and give you 10 seconds of my preaching time and tell you, I dare you open your mouth and let your tongue be filled with singing. Come on, right in your living room, right in your house, in your car on your job if you know if you know that God can do something in your life if he could turn this situation around if he could bring us out if you know he can do it let your mouth be filled with laughter let your tongue be filled with singing I dare you praise him while you're watching like it's already happened, baby. Praise the Lord. My mouth is filled. Watch this. This is the testimony of the ones he, he brought out. It get real good. Verse 3, in, 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 in verse, uh, the end of verse 2, it says that the heathens are even saying, the Lord had done great things for them. Whew, God. They said, even the unsaved are saying, that's God. Even those who don't know God are saying, that's God. By verse 3, they said, we just joined in with them. And said, yep, the Lord has done great things for us. Thereof, we are glad. What are you talking about, Pastor Dillard, this morning? I am showing you a pattern of God's goodness. I'm showing you that in Psalm 126, verses 1, 2, and 3, the testimony of those that God restored was so clear that even the sinners, the world, those who didn't know him had to say, that's God. Can I ask you another question? Can God bother 
our lives? Can he borrow our lives for a few minutes that it might get the attention of those who don't know him? Can he do something? So I want you in this time to be filled with hope, be filled with joy, and to know that even in the midst of all we're facing, that God is still in control. My God, I wish somebody would grab that out of the atmosphere and just say, God, I know you're still in control. Every time my mind wants to wonder and my hope wants to wane, I have to be reminded that just like he's done it for them and so many others, God's going to do it for me. But then something strange happens in the text. We see all of this Joy and laughter. Are you still there? All of this exuberance and testimony in verses 1 through 3. But then something strange happens in verse 4. In verse 4, the testimony now goes to turn again our captivity. <laughs> Turn again. Mm. What you talking about, Dillard? Turn again. What happens here is in spite of what God has already done in verses 1 through 3, Israel finds itself in need all over again. As a matter of fact, if I could present to you the context, the context of Psalm 126 is that verses 1 through 3 is the testimony of those who had already returned from captivity. Verses 4 through 6 was for those who had not yet been released from captivity. That means while one group is shouting about what God has already done, there yet remains much more for God to do. <laughs> How does that apply to me? It applies to us. And just as we've seen God do things for others and ourselves before, I don't know about you, but I still yet find myself in need of something from God. And what this does is, I like King James right here, the NIV and the NLT robbed this particular verse when he said, turn again the captivity of Zion. I know, I know, maybe for many of us, one time was enough. But we are in an hour right now where we are saying, God, I have my verses one through three. I have a testimony of all you've ever done for me. I have proof that you got the power to move when I need you to move. But Lord, I'm in verse four. And now I'm saying, can you turn it again? If you sitting next to somebody, don't touch them. Just look at them and say, I need God to turn it again. I need God to move one more time. I need God to step in to what we're facing right now. Lord, you've been my help and you've gotten me over things and you've brought us through many challenges. But Lord... I need you to turn it again. Lay hands on yourself and say, Self. Y'all ain't having no church. Lay hands on yourself and say, Self. Just like God turned it last time. He's about to. 
to turn it again. If you believe, open your mouth and shout right now. Come on, somebody say, Lord, turn it again. Lord, turn it again. You brought us through a whole lot. We know you can do it, but we need you to turn it again. I have context. I've seen precedent. I know your history. I've seen your track record. I've read the word of God. I have the testimony of the saints. I even have my own testimony. I know that as I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed because the Lord, he kept me. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where, where I would be. And God, I've seen you do it, but Lord, can you turn it again? Somebody holler, Lord, I need you to turn it again. You brought us out of other things. You saw us through other calamities. But Lord, somebody holler, Lord, turn it again. Come on, let me see you type that in the comments. Lord, my prayer is turn it again. Just like you did it in verses one through three. I need we need God who has proven that he can to turn it again lift your hands and say Lord I know you're going to turn it again come on say Lord I know you're going to turn it again you done brought us through too much we done seen you move too many times. When you brought us out last time, it was like a dream. Lord, turn. Turn it again. Do you believe he's going to turn it again? I said, do you believe he's going to turn it again? Come on, if you ain't typed it yet, say, Lord, I believe you're going to turn it again. Yeah, yeah. Woo! He's lifting our captivity. Ha, God. He's lifting our captivity. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know how he's going to do it. But one thing I know. Woo, God. I dare you jump up in your living room and just turn one time and say, he's turning it again. He, he's turning. Let your family look at you crazy. Just spin in your kitchen and say, he's turning it again. God, God, God. Write this down. Write this down. I got to give you the thoughts. I got to give you some thoughts. Verse 1 through 3 was for those who had experienced it, and 4 through 6 was those who needed God to do what they had seen him do before. They needed him to turn it again. Sit down, write this down. Henry writes in his commentary that the beginnings of mercies encourage us to pray for the completion of them. 
the beginnings of mercies. Encourage us to pray for the completion of them. If you've seen God start it, if you've seen him move before, you ought to be encouraged all the more to pray, Lord, turn it again. Three thoughts I want to leave you with so that I can pray. First one is this. Let experience generate expectation. Who, God? Oh, God, let your experience with God generate your expectation. Oh, God. Ooh, I'll say it again for the people in the back. Let your experience of what God has done for you and for others, let that Generate your own expectation. Huh? Turn again. Turn again means I know you can do this. I've seen you do this. And now I expect. <laughs> come on, church. Come on. Let me hear you. Huh? I know you can do it. I've seen you do it. And based on those two facts, now I expect. Turn again. <laughs> I got to go, but that turn again is down in my shoes. Y'all better pray for me. Turn again. Let experience generate expectation. For those of you who are our elders, same God brought you through Vietnam, civil rights, huh? Some of our uncles through Desert Storm survived the crack epidemic. Y'all ain't talking to me here. September 11th came and they told us the world was coming to an end. Some of you, God has brought you through abusive relationships, and divorces, and death of children, death of parents, and some of you have been laid off and foreclosed and repossessed and evicted and the same God that wouldn't let you lose your mind then is the same God who's going to turn it again. I got to get out of here, but rev back and say, Lord, Turn it again. Lord, I done got happy all by myself. He's the same. Let your experience with God generate your expectation. I saw what he did in verses 1 through 3. Well, I know he going to do it for me. Somebody say he's the God of either way. Since he's the God of either way, number one, let experience generate expectation. Here's number two. This is really what I want to tell you. I, I could have just gave you this and, and, and gone home. Here's the number two. If you don't get nothing else, get number two. Number two is accept however God chooses to do it. Whoo. Whoo. Here's where I'm going to lose half of you here. Here's where I'm going to lose half of you. You have to know that when you expect God to do it, you ought not use that which is a good thing, expectation, against God. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we have expectation that might be too specific. And because we put too many specifics on our expectation of God, we only look for him to come one way. And we might miss him in the way that he's coming. We might miss what he's doing because though we have expectation, it is limited. So you have to accept however God chooses 
to do it. It's in the text. You don't see it. That's why I'm going to make it clear to you. After he says, turn again our captivity, that second part of verse 4, he says, as the streams in the south. <laughs> Lord, I lost you. Turn it. Then he says, as the streams in the south, then he jumps to verse 5 and say, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Six, he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Somebody say he's the God of either way. Let me clear that up so I can let you go. He first says, as the streams in the south, to the south of Judea was a dry and barren district. In the summer, the streams were dried up, and so was this district. And what would happen is, is in the autumn, the rains would come down as a deluge. And this southern district, watch this would all of a sudden experience a flash flood. What are you saying, pastor? I'm saying, he says in the second part of verse 4, turn our captivity. I know you can do it fast. I know you can do it like a flash flood in the south. I know that you can do it in such a way that one minute is dry. And the next minute, there's an oasis. And let me tell you something. You can sit there and act holy, but my preferred measure is always that God moves in a flash flood. <laughs> I know you ain't going to say amen. You don't want nobody to judge you. But I'm saying, Lord, move, and I'm asking you to do it fast. As a matter of fact, sometimes whether he does it fast or not, you ought to just praise him just because you know that around this time tomorrow... He could do it like he did it for the prophet. But watch this. Something strange happens by verse 5. But then he said, but they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth barren precious seed. He then gives an example of this slow, laborious, weeping field process. It's as if he's saying, whether you do it fast like a flash flood or whether I got to cry. Lord, half the viewers are going to log off. <laughs> whether he does it by tomorrow or whether I got to sow and wait the four months for it to reap. And while I'm waiting, I'm crying, sowing in tears, wailing. And I don't know how he's going to do it. All I know is that he's going to do it. But you must understand that you have to accept however God does it. Some of them got it by a flash flood. Others had to cry and wait. Have you ever had to cry and wait? Oh, maybe, maybe it's not coming like the flash floods in the south. Maybe we got to cry and wait. And I just want to make my turn here and just tell you, if he does it fast, or if you got to sow with tears in your eyes. He is the God of either way. If it happens like a dream, or if it is labor that you have to work long and hard to get, I came in here to tell you, be not dismayed. Him writer said, whatever be tied, 
because God will take care of you and I don't know which way he's going to decide to do it but all I know is whatever way it comes it was still God lay hands on yourself and say self you got to make up in your mind that however God decides come on however God chooses I will accept I'm believing that it's coming real fast just like a flash flood in the southern district but if I have to walk the floor and tarry all night long if I have to fast and pray if I have to turn my TV off if I have to pull back from my social circles one thing I know is that either way God's going to deliver me. Lift up your hands wherever you are and say, Lord, I trust your decisions. I trust your processes. I trust your direction. I trust your protocol. I will accept however God decides to restore me because I realize that whatever way he does it it's still going to be him I realize that however we make it out of this it's still going to be him I realize that God never slumbers God never sleeps and I I'm going to praise him however he does it I'm going to praise him either way I'm going to praise him with tears in my eyes praise him with lips of stammering tongues praise him because I know that God is moving I may not know how but I know I know that I know he will never leave me I know he will never forsake me so however However, he decides to do it. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to lift my voice to the God of my salvation. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. I dare you give him a praise right where ever you are I want to see you type either way come on either way however he moves whenever he moves if it lasts another few weeks it's still God I'm not afraid I'm not worried cause God is in it either way somebody holler either way oh he could do it in a flash flood Or he may require sowing and tears 
and waiting for your harvest. But I want you to know that either way, it's God. I dare you clap your hands in your house. I dare you clap your hands in your living room, in your kitchen. I dare you say, Lord, either way. I'm praying the Lord send a flash flood. Can I just be honest? I'm in verse 4. That's where I'm at. But I've also been sowing in tears, walking the floor and praying and sowing. Weeping should not be wasted. It should not hinder you sowing. Here's what I mean by that. Even when you got to weep, you should still be doing what God say do. Still working, still praying, still believing, still helping people. Still in devotion. They didn't stop because they were weeping. They kept doing it. And I just want to tell you, if you let experience generate expectation, and number two, if you accept how God chooses to do it, here's the third one. Proceed with certainty. That's your number three right there. Proceed with certainty. I'm out of time, but the end of verse 6, it says, Those who sow in tears, bringing their precious seed, they shall doubtless. Think about that word this week. They shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing their sheaves, their harvest with them. However he does it, either way, you will come with your sheaves. Proof, harvest, fruit that God is working on your behalf. He's the God of either way, church. Pray specifically, but leave room. Since his thoughts are above our thoughts and ways above our ways, it is likely that he will probably do it differently than we think. Can you serve with a smile on your face the God of either way? Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this beautiful time. We're encouraged by the thanksgiving for restoration in Psalm 126. We saw you do it. Yeah. Yeah. That way, we can ask you to do it again. You brought us through so much. History, history of this country, history of this world, history of humanity, biblical history, plagues, famines, wars, dictators. You brought your people through all that. So now we say turn it again. Our experience with you is creating our expectation. We're going to accept however you choose to do it. And we're going to keep going with certainty. We will proceed with certainty. And we believe that we will come doubtless with the proof of what you've done. In Jesus' name, clap those hands and give God a praise. Sing a little bit of that. Come on. You made a way say you made you made a way say you made made a way and we're standing here only because only because you made you made a way thank you Jesus that you made You may
you made a way. Say you move mountains. You cause war. Before we raise our offering and give our benediction, I want to open the doors of the church. We never come to church and assume that everyone in our midst has made a confession and knows the Lord. So today, I'm going to pray this prayer. And if you are watching and you know that you struggle, one, with not having a relationship with Jesus, but maybe you're one of those people who have a problem with the way God decides to do things. You to know that life in Christ is surrender, and He'll give you His Spirit power to be able to accept and live in the will of God. After we pray this prayer, we want to do altar follow up. I'll give you an email. All you have to do is shoot an email and say, I made a confession today in service online, and I need follow up, and we'll be to you. We'll get right to you. Myself, Pastor Debbie, are postured and ready to minister to you through this time. So pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. I have heard your word, and I feel drawn by your spirit. So I confess that I am a sinner, and I repent of those sins. Lord, I may not even fully understand what all this means right now but I sense your spirit leading me this way and furthermore I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior I believe that he died and God raised him from the dead and that one day he's coming back for me Lastly, Lord, I ask you to fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit that I may have the sustainability to live the way you've called me to live. I believe that by this confession, by my repentance, and by my belief, I am now saved. In Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands for all of those who have made that confession? Listen, if that was you, I want you to send me a short email at fcogclc, fcogclc at fcogevanston.org. FCOGCLC is the acronym of our church, First Church of God Christian Life Center. FCOGCLC at fcogevanston.org. Shoot that email. You ain't got to say a whole lot. I made a confession at the altar call, and I need follow-up. You will hear from me personally. I want to do that. I want to lead you deeper into this walk. And we are believing God for that. Clap your hands one more time. Come on, First Church. Put some hand claps on that screen. It's offering time. And we are so thankful for our offering time. All my tithers say, yeah. All right, I can hear y'all through the internet. We are so thankful. Listen. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to give your offering, then I'm going to come back and pray. Praise team's going to sing. But you can give a couple different ways. Listen, we have five. You can give online at fcogevanson.org. You can go there right now. You can text the give from your mobile device by texting the acronym FCOGCLC to 73256. FCOG73256. You probably already see this on your screen or it's coming up now. You can mail it in, 1524 Simpson Street, Evanston, Illinois, 60201. 1524 Simpson Street, Evanston, Illinois, 60201. Or you can stop by our office, open this week till 12, Tuesday to Friday, and uh, today till 12 as well. Listen, the last one, we have a mail slot 
added on our door. On the Ashland side, it's the door you would come in to go to the office during business hours. Many of you have already used that this week. Come by anytime on your way to the grocery store and going back home. Just stop by, put it in that slot, and uh, we will get that. All right? So come on, I want you to take about 90 seconds to go ahead and give your offering. I'm going to come back because I want to pray for it, and then I'll give benediction. Come on, praise team. Help them. Church. Say you made, you yes you did. Say you made, you made a Don't know how, don't know how, but you did it. Made a don't know how, don't know how, but you did it. You made a don't know how, don't know how, but you did it. Made a and we're standing. Listen, Lord, I pray your blessings, supernatural, divine, upon all the gifts that have been given. Lord, we are in an unprecedented time where many people have much need. And Father, we are thanking you that through many avenues, the church included, you are moving and handling these. I pray abundance, overflow, and more than enough in this season, as challenging as things are for the people of God, our community, and our world. I pray for those who have given today, those who have given this week, and I pray your blessings upon whenever they've given, according to Deuteronomy 111, that the Lord will bless you and make you a thousand times more than you are. Deuteronomy 111, I pray that he will make you a thousand times more than you are. Thank you for our church. Thank you that for 110 years, you've allowed us to stand. And we've been through a lot, but you've kept us. You've kept us, and you're still keeping us. And the name that is above every name, name, the name is Jesus. Let us all say amen. Bless you. Again, you can give those ways. We've had an amazing time today, and I am so glad. Yeah, that's it. Clap your hands. Thank God for all the preachers. and people who are here I want you to all keep praying for each other I want you to remember our five points respect right we're going to show respect for those who are making these decisions on our behalf be reasonable I'm saying to all of our elders and people with pre-existing conditions be very reasonable don't be out here willy-nilly I want you to have regard for one another when you are interacting with somebody all right Give them space. Be responsible. This is our church. We're going to take care of it. Amen. Keep giving. And be reverent. Be patient. Be purposeful in everything you do. And be prayerful. Um, remember the prayer line every morning, 645-712-770-4010. Code is 705-580-POUND. We'll put that on the screen. And I'll be back for Word Wednesday. All right, Wednesday, 7 o'clock, right here in our virtual sanctuary. So thankful for what God is doing. All right, we're going to give you a little benediction, and then the praise team is going to sing us out. Um, thank you so much for being here. If you need us, call us. Don't be out there going through, and don't let us know. Amen. All right, let the church say amen to that. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you 
and give you his peace. I'm going to turn it over to the praise team, but before I do that, I want to give a few shout outs. Shout out to Sister Audrey Hancox, Sister Robin Thomas, Sister Linda Halbert Nielsen is on. We're certainly thankful for Sister Toreen, Sister Patricia Dean, Sister Tawanda. All right, uh, Fort Wayne is in the house. Sister Antoinette Dickerson, Sister Erica Hatfield, Sister Crystal Boone is on. And uh, we're thankful so much for all of you all being on today. And uh, we're so thankful for Prophet Gibson, Sister Kathy Roseman, Sister Sandra Maris, Sister Lorna Jackson, Mother Rose Corley, so good to have you on. Sister Tanisha, God bless you. And uh, we're so thankful for all of you all always on. God bless you. Love you all. Have a great week. Come on, jam out with the praise thing for a few more minutes. I love you.